All right, hello everyone. This is Kendra Watkins with ASUN Sports, and this is another installment of the Lunchbox. And here, joined with me, I have Caleb Holmesley, guard from the Liberty Flames. Man, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing well. Um, first and foremost, I just wanted to congratulate you guys. You guys have been on a remarkable streak. Um, right now, you guys have the longest streak, win streak in the nation at 12 wins. Man, how do you feel about it? I feel good, you know, but I don't think it stops here for us. Uh, I think we improve every day and, and see how far it takes us. Okay, no doubt. Um, basically, um, just since that 12 win streak, just going back a little bit further, um, you guys made your NCAA tournament um, mm -hmm. appearance last or well, earlier this year, um, where you guys actually had a win against Mississippi State. Just tell me how did that how did that tournament run? What did you take away from that tournament run and how has it benefited you going into the off season? Yeah, um, I think it was good for us. Uh, I think for the returners that came back, it uh, showed that we know how to win hard games. Um, and I think that it showed for the freshmen coming in that we can show them how to win hard games. Uh, that was a very hard. And, um, you know, we had to fight to the end in that game. But for us, um, for me in that game, it was just special going into it. Uh, you know, you watch, you watch all these teams, these underdogs go in, March Madness when you're a kid, watching college basketball, you see them going in and get a win. And for me to be on the other side of that, it was special. All right, man, no doubt, because just looking back on that, I mean, you had a career high. You dropped 30 that game, man. Just tell me, what did that mean for you personally, just seeing that as a kid and just being in that stage? Yeah, it was crazy. Um, you know, I always I always grew up watching Steph Curry. Um, I, okay. actually had season, I actually had season tickets to uh, Davidson when I was a kid and while he was at Davidson. So I'd always see him do good in big games. Um, and I actually saw him in, when they went the tournament. He was I think he was averaging 30-something in the tournament that year. Um, when they went to the Elite Eight. So just for me to do it, it was special. Um, and I think for my family, just to, you know, see everything I've been through in my career and, and for that kind of to, to just pan out the way it did, it was special. Yes, because I, I remember um, Steph Curry during that Davidson run, and yeah, he went insane. That was the first time I just seen someone pulling up from that deep. I mean, when he went to Golden State and I saw it, I was like, okay, I remember this from Davidson because during the fourth quarter, he would just go crazy. So. Um, just tell me, since, you know, we're talking about NBA players, um, just growing up, who were some of the people that you modern, um, like modeled your game after? Yeah. Uh, I'd probably say Kevin Durant or Paul George. Uh, I like the way they play. I like the way Kevin Durant kind of stretches the floor, kind of he can get into a one-on-one -on -one game, but he can also come off screens. And then the way Paul George plays as well, um, the way he sets up screens, does different things on the offensive end and defensive end. Okay. And... Um, after your tournament run, I mean, you guys work during the off season. Just what are some goals that um, Coach McKay set for you during the off season, and um, how has it benefited you going into the season? Yeah, um, I think for us as a team personally, we had to remember that it's a new season. Um, everything you did in the past season, it doesn't matter. Uh, you have to work to get to the end goal that you want to be at just for this next season. Um, and I think he's done a really good job at that, at kind of reminding us, like, hey, it's a new season. We have new goals, new challenges in this season. Let's move on from the next season. Got you. And just reading some articles and everything, because I was actually um, reading an uh, ESPN article earlier um, about how Coach McKay, he challenged you. Um, I yeah. believe it was after your freshman season just mm -hmm. to work harder. And um, how have you grown just under his tutelage? Yeah, uh, I think he, he saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. Uh, I think that that I thought I knew the way coming into college, you know, how you come in as a freshman and you think that you're good enough to play. And at that point, I guess I wasn't ready, and, and he stuck with that. Um, but I think for me and him, our relationship grows deeper than basketball, um, and I think that's kind of where I, I, I grew uh, as a man, and I think that's how I grew on the court uh, because when he started to trust in me, I started to trust in him uh, with what, what his ways were. Um, and even if I disagreed with his ways, I knew that it was for my best interest. Gotcha. Okay. And um, just give me because I know – um, we watch the games a lot here at the conference office. So um, I was actually looking at another um, interview that you had and you were just talking about, I believe it was your freshman year, but you just did an interview and you were talking about some of your favorite plays and you went back to an AAU team. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to update that because yeah. I know I've seen you on ESPN top 10 a lot during the morning getting ready for work. So just tell me what has been some of your favorite plays or your most memorable play? Yeah, um, I'd probably say my thousand point. I remember that play vividly. Uh, it keeps coming back because it was funny because the whole game, like everyone knew I needed a thousand or everyone knew I was close. Okay. And so he came out of the game 
And I think I was going to sit for the rest of the time. And then Coach K was like, you can go back in and get it. So I ended up getting it uh, in one play. But I'd probably say that one. And then I'd honestly say uh, my 30th point against Mississippi State. Uh, okay. Just because it was the excitement in the game, how everyone was cheering for us in the in the arena. And uh, it, it gave us the lead when I hit that point. So it was very special. Okay. Well, again, my favorite play is just against South Carolina State where um, Lavelle threw you the lob and you went up and got it. I was like, okay, he got another level there. I, I didn't see it. I, remember, so. I actually remember when, when it was in the air, I'm like, I don't know if I can get this. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. I was like, whoa. Okay. All right. Well, again, take us through your because right now I know you guys um, participated in the Bahamas during the showcase there. So um, just tell me, how has the team gelled throughout this current win streak? And um, how do you feel that it's made you better as a person and has made the team better? Yeah, um, I think for us, we're just so selfless that, uh, like, you know, we don't care if, if anyone scores on any given night. Um, and I think that's what makes our group so special. Um, I think that we're, our bond, like I said, with Coach McKay goes deeper than basketball. Um, sometimes we won't even talk about basketball. We have a group text that we all text in. Uh, we have fun, you know, we, we get together on nights, play 2K, Madden. We, we just try to hang out as much as possible, you know. And I think that that's what is uh, helping us with our win streak right now is how connected we are, um, you know. And uh, I just think that the deeper we go, the more connected we'll be. And I think that these friendships will last forever. Got you. All right, well, tell me this, because I know right now you're more known for your all-around game. Mm -hmm. um, tell me. Because right now we have Mayo Baxter Bell. He's coming off Player of the Week. Who has better handles, you or Mayo? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm gonna say me. But if you ask Mayo, he's gonna say him. Okay. okay. Mayo thinks he's got the best handles on the team, so you had to take that up with him. Because for right now, it's me. Okay. Because I was I was looking at some of the highlights. I was like, oh, he has the ball on the screen. Sure Mayo so. can go. Mayo can go. He can go. Okay, okay. All right, well, um, take me through your pregame rituals because I know you guys guys have some games coming up, and this segment is called the Lunchbox. So I know usually before I play a game at the Y, you know, I like to go to McDonald's, get like a two for five, something like that. <laughs> so <laughs> tell me what's your pregame rituals. So if we play at 7, I usually come in around 10.30. Um, I get some shots up, maybe some treatment. Um, and then I usually go back home for a little bit. I'll take about an hour and a half nap throughout the day. So it's usually between 1 and 2 o'clock. Um, then sometimes I come back in around three, just mm -hmm. hang out with some people in the office. If that's coaches, managers, whoever it is, just come hang out, um, just try to be social. Um, and then we pregame at 3.30. Um, usually I'll get chicken, some type of vegetables and some rice. Um, try to stay hydrated throughout the day. Um, and then when five o'clock hits, I go into the uh, to the training uh, room. I'll get in the warm tub. We have a warm tub in there. So I'll get in there, try to get loose. Uh, get on the court at about 5.30, come back in. And the ritual I have is I always got to eat some sour Skittles before the game. Gotcha. So I sit, I sit down, eat my sour Skittles, uh, chop it up with my teammates, whoever's in there, and then we meet at uh, with 60 minutes on the clock. And then that's that's about it. That's how I get ready for games every day at 7 o'clock. Okay. I see you got the Derrick Rose Skittles yeah. uh, pregame, the Marshawn Lynch. Okay, got you, got you, got you. All right, so um, – I wanted to first, um, again, congratulate you guys on your win streak. I know we're getting ready for conference play at the top of the year. Um, so just tell me, what is your mind state going into um, conference play? What are some goals that you set personally for yourself and team goals just getting ready to go into play? Uh, I think for conference, we got to take, take it one game at a time. Um, you know, it's a new season. Everyone says conference season is a new season. It's anybody's season when you go into that. Uh, conference is going to be tough this year. You know, I see North Florida doing big things. Uh, they're playing really well right now. Um, you know, for us, I just think it's just like I said, we just got to take it one day at a time, continue to get better, grow on the things that that we can grow at. And uh, and like I said, get better at the things that we need to get better at. Um, but I think for me personally, you know, I just want to go into conference uh, free, just play with a lot of freedom, uh, try to go out there, help my team win every game. Um, if that's scoring the ball, scoring the ball, if that's assisting the ball, that's assisting the ball, if that's playing defense like at a very high level one night and not scoring. And that's that's what it takes. But for me, it's all about winning. Um, I know I got the, the preseason player of the year accolade, but, you know, that preseason, that preseason stuff can go to anybody. Um, and I think for me, like I said, I just got to continue to go out there and just be focused on winning. OK, well, no doubt. Well, um, I wish you guys much success going into play. Um, I look forward to it. Um, there's 
there's some squads that I'm really looking forward to playing and giving you guys some competition. So um, I wish you guys the best. But again, thank you very much for taking time out of your busy day. Um, good luck in the DC Holiday um, Festival that you guys have coming up um, during Christmas. So again, this is Kendra Watkins with another installment of The Lunchbox. Uh, make sure you guys tune in, follow us on all social media platforms.